Hi and welcome to Having a Glow Part 2 and in this part we are going to be talking about the anatomy of glow. What is it? Well, that's quite simple. A glow is an additive blur. So let's go ahead and add our own ghetto glow. An adjustment layer here, add a Gaussian blur, make it really big and then add that back onto the original. And there we have it. We have our own glow. And it's perfect. So that's the end of this tutorial series. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Just kidding. If we go over to our effects and presets panel, we'll notice there are lots of different types of blurs and each one gives a different result. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, which one is the After Effects default glow using? And I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that it's a, an approximation of a Gaussian blur, which is actually pretty unfortunate. It's not a very good algorithm to be using for a glow that's going to require some extra work if we wanted to make it look good because light doesn't fall off like this in the real world. Uh, that's why this doesn't really look like a glow. It kind of just looks like someone slapped on a blur and then added it back on. Oh wait, that's what we did. How can we make this look more realistic? We want to approximate the way light works in the real world and we can do that. So let's put on our physics hat for a second and do some quick Googling. This is a image that I found and this is sort of demonstrating how light falls off in the real world using inverse square. That's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for emulating reality. This is what we will get if we're using linear fall off, which we're kind of currently using if we're using a Gaussian blur, not exactly, but something similar. So we want to aim for inverse square where the light falls off exponentially the further away it gets from the source of the glow. And the way we're going to achieve that is essentially just doubling the radius each time. We can't achieve it with a single glow. We're going to have to add more than one. So I'm going to add a slider control here. I'm going to call this one intensity. Let's tie the intensity of each glow to this slider here. And then the radius, I'm going to start the radius at two. And then for every single glow, we're going to double it. So, okay, there we go. We have our 10 glows and it starts at two. It ends up at a thousand, which is actually the max. It should be a thousand twenty-four. And now we can play with the intensity because we have 10 glows. The intensity, a small amount is going to go a long way. So let's go 0.15. Okay. We're getting somewhere. The problem is that the sRGB color space problem is coming back to bite us. So going back to part one, we should be working linearly if we want this to look better. The only problem with that is now the threshold is ruined. So now we need to go back and tie all these thresholds to something. So I'm going to add another slider. And we just go edit copy expression only and then select all these and we can paste it. And there we have it. We have our own inverse square fall off glow using 10 of the default glows, two sliders. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome. It's very computationally wasteful having 10 effects stacked atop each other, but we are getting a much better look. Now let's try and emulate this using just a single glow. So I'll take a screenshot of that. Add new layer, just add one glow and let's try. Okay, well, threshold and I'll lower to zero. Radius, it was extending all the way to about up here. Let's just check. And uh, the middle bit isn't bright enough. So let's increase the glow intensity. And we simply can't do it. Our result will always look just like we've slapped a Gaussian blur on the result will always look like we've added a Gaussian blur and then just added it back on because it's essentially what we've done. It doesn't look like a real source of light like we have with our inverse square fall off glow. So the alternative to having 10 of these is we could use a third party plugin such as Deep Glow from Plugin Everything. How convenient. And this emulates the inverse square law for you so you don't have to have 10 copies of the same glow. But it's up to you what you can achieve it just using inbuilt tools if you prefer. In the next part, we are going to discuss intensity and thresholding, which might seem very straightforward, but there's a bit more to it than that. And uh, you have to pay special attention to get the best results with those. So I'll see you in that video.